Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So I want to review the patch, but um, you know, this video is coming out a little bit late because I, I only have like a limited window of time where I can just record without like any noise and there's like absolute peace and quiet. And I thought this video was pretty important because I wanted to talk about the new patch uh, and kind of just give my opinions on basically everything that they introduced. Starting with... I haven't even reviewed the Yetis or anything, like I didn't even, <laughs> after the Yetis came out, I didn't even like confirm. I basically talked a little bit about all the potential monsters that could have been the new Rebirth monster. Now a lot of people before were speculating, because I do like read, um, I read like the subreddit sometimes, sometimes I, I, uh, people talk on my Discord as well, but um, people were saying that since there's like the Rebirth is like, Rebirth count is 30, and they're introducing a new monster um, that they might introduce something like like a Victoria or something um, like you know alongside the Yeti, but I, I suppose they're not going to do that because I think the reason why they had the Mihos and the Birdies last month was because the both the Mihos and the Birdies were were very very strong. Like the the Dark Mihos were like they're they're like top tier monsters. The Birdies are I wouldn't consider them like you know the highest tier, but they're still very very strong monsters. So I guess the uh, 433 didn't want everyone to have like super OP monsters, so they basically decided to kind of put them together so you can only kind of get one of each. Um, or not one of each, but like you can only get a few of each. Um, so you can't get like, you know, five Dark Mihos. Actually, I don't think you ever need five. Four Dark Mihos and like, you know, like four Dark Birdies. They, they, they won't let you do that. But it's perfectly fine. Um, the Yetis are... The Yetis are alright. Um, a lot of people are thinking that they were going to introduce like the Victorias or, so or something alongside the Yetis, but it's it's probably not happening because uh, you know the update already updated and the Yetis are already out. So I, I guess this is just the way it is. Now I'll take a look at the light dark Yetis and their skills and kind of just how how I would build them. Now I'm kind of interested in the light one. I currently have one so far, but she doesn't have like the optimal slots. She has one of each, which isn't. You know, it, it's not bad, but it's not, it's not, uh, it's not the best. So, yeah, here she is. So this is the Light Yeti. Now, this monster is basically mostly for um, PvP defense. Now, you could use her for farming, but I don't think it's that ideal. Unless you really have no other better SP boost monster than her, then I guess she's probably the... Um, the best thing you can use for farming, but you know, we literally ha we had the light birdie last month We had the light Sarah two months ago. We had the light Jack last month So like those all those monsters are better for farming. She's mostly for PvP defense. You could use her for offense as well um, just basically Gem her I guess just gem her tanky and then you just go in and then until you get your bar full and then you try to shock something if you do land a shock then you basically um you win. That's it. You you just win. So yeah, she's she's just a morale boost shock monster. Now she has very very nice stat distribution. If you take a look at her stats, she's got almost 3k HP. Now her HP is a little bit on the low side. I would have preferred um, maybe like you know 100 of this defense go into like 10k HP. Usually like HP if you divide if you add the stats of monsters together and you divide the HP by 10, um, it usually adds up to like around the same for every single monster. So, yeah, like, if you trade, like, a thousand defense for, like, HP, it's not, it, it, she would have, like, much higher, um, what's it called, effective HP, but it's all, it's all right, it's actually still very, very nice, because she's, she has, like, 3k defense, uh, 3.1k defense, and this is almost, almost 3k HP, so this is actually pretty high, and she actually has, um, 2,400 attack. Now, you do want her to do a little bit of damage, because if you do actually put her on PvP defense, she's most likely going to be ignored, and there's actually a really good way to, actually, yeah, a pretty good way to use her is you, um, not necessarily like a full light defense, but you can actually use some other defenses where like you have some very threatening monsters. Say for example, you're using like Dark Mihos or yeah, just ag aggressors in general. You put her up and then if they hit you with dark attackers, they might like they would just still ignore her. And then with her being light plus the um, 2400 base attack, she might be able to do a little bit of damage and 
basically just be be kind of a threat against the the dark attackers. Now the really good thing about her, she has lo really low recovery. You just, when you look at a monster, you just want the recovery to be as low as humanly possible. So uh, she doesn't she does she does fit that perfectly. Um, the Yetis have quite a few hits. I don't know how many hits they have exactly, but they're it's not too bad. So that's that's the light Yeti, um, and then the dark Yeti. Oh yeah, if, if you were to gem her, just just go full tanky. Like, just... If you don't gem her full tanky, they could attack her first and kill her really fast. I mean, you, I guess you could kind of cheese people. Like, say for example, you leave a attack type monster, you gem it somewhat tanky. Like, say for example, you're using like... Um, what's an attack type monster that you would gem j tanky? Like Fire Arthur or something, for example. You can like gem the Fire Arthur tanky. And then you gem, you secretly sneak like one attack gem on her, and then she would be like kind of a threat against the dark attackers. Um, if you if you do want to do like HP defense attack, I guess it kind of works. As she does have two thousand four hundred attack, so it's not like it's not too bad. Um, but probably like if you're not trying to cheese and you want just like highest efficiency, I would probably just go HP HP defense. And if you can, like, if you put her on Pugilist, she's going to be amazing, because she's a, she is a morale booster that people tend to ignore. Like, those types of monsters, if you put on Pugilist, are are very, very strong. Um, so that's it for the, for the Light Yeti. You can also do, like, any of the defensive sets, like Conviction, Protection, I think it's called Protection, and Life. Okay, so this is, um, man, my, my voice is cracking. What the heck is going on? Uh... <laughs> Going through puberty for a second time. So, this is the Dark Yeti. Now, she, she's she got a stun and a seal. Uh, these are both PvP skills, but they're kind of lower tier PvP skills because, you know, when you're in the higher tier of PvP, um, resistance kind of plays a part. Resistance is pretty important. It kind of makes your, your uh, debuffs a lot less effective. But she does have a cool AoE seal, so I, I guess it's not too bad. Um... And she is dark, so she does have that crit damage. Like, you can actually use her as a bruiser, but she's mostly tanky. If you look at her stats, um, she just has, like, a lot of HP. Like, it's, it says balance, but she actually should be tank type. Then again, if she's tank type, she might have more defense. Her stats seem really low for some weird reason. All three of her other stats are really low. Recovery, uh, she has 200 more recovery than the light one, so... You know, a lot. Some of the stat distribution kind of went to recovery. There's a there was a video I made a while ago um, talking about how stat distribution works, but I, I actually just mentioned it just now. It's, it's very simple. Like if you um, divide this by ten and you add up all the stats, most of the monsters have around the same type of st total stats, and it's kind of distributed between the the four stats that you have over here. Now there are certain monsters that have slightly higher distribution. Um, than other monsters, but those are like very unique. Um, you know, monsters like the, that they buffed during some patches. Like they, the, the devs purposely buff those monsters during certain patches. Those ones have like, um, you know, slightly more stats. But usually, most monsters have pretty even stats. If you, if you divide the HP by ten, add all the stats together, they usually add up to. I, I can't remember how much stats a four star monster is supposed to have. Um, you can check this with any monster, unless it's a monster that they buffed. Uh, in like one of the patches a while back, then it, it should um, it should always add up to around the same amount. So yeah, I probably I guess you could use her um, for like if you're like a new player and you're you do the rebirth a few times. Um, it doesn't matter if you're you're new or old. You should always do the rebirth because you can get this monster, raise it to evil three for the astro gems. It's always worth it to raise a monster to evil three. Um, for the first time and get the and complete the astro guide and get the astro gem. So that's that's one thing. Um, the second thing is if you're a new player and since you're raising her to complete the astro guide anyways to get the astro gems, you might as well t use her for early game PvP because stun is very very strong in low tier PvP because everyone doesn't have a lot of high resistance. And if you can just stun one enemy, um, basically they just have one less monster attacking. And since you're the one that's going first. Um, having these types of CCs is 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 pretty effective, so I, I, I guess that's pretty good for like newer players. Um, if you want to use her, I probably would still gem her full tanky. Just go like HP HP defense. You could go HP attack defense as well. If you're if she's not gonna get hit, um, you just use her for like arena offense. But 
I'm not really sure if you would raise her. I think at most I would probably get her to like just five stars. And I really wouldn't six star her. I don't think she's really worth it for, for the late game. Uh, there's another monster I wanted to talk about, which is the, the, uh, the secret or not the secret that Summoner's War terms. I played that game for like two, three years. Um, I play MSL for like a year now, but uh, the Guardian Dungeon Monster. The Guardian Dungeon Monster is is this is this frog. Todora. Yeah, do you guys ever read this and sometimes sometimes read it as Toradora? I don't I don't know why. You just add an R here, and then it would be Toradora. Um, but anyways, the the the, the Todora is a um, Morabu Sat monster with an attack lead. Now, I was talking about this monster a while back. If you guys watch my new um, new Golem Speed 10 team, I can actually show it really quick if you guys are interested. I guess this is kind of like old stuff, old news. But I, I do have like two of my Radices gemmed up so I can actually show it a bit. And I've been farming B10 for, for a little while. So uh, the strategy with B10 is I, I was using three light Radices. Now two of these are on Siphon. I actually tried using the third one on Ruin because I, if you guys remember correctly or if you guys watched that video, um, two of my Radices have 100% crit. I have to, enough Siphon gems to get them to 100% crit. However, the third one, I only was able to get to like 97% crit. So I decided to basically just use a normal set and get it to 100% crit. So... Um, you know, all three of these have 100% crit. Two of them is on Siphon, crit rate double attack. Um, and then the the third one is on uh, Ruin, crit rate double attack with 100% uh, crit as well. And then I'm using the, the, the Light Victoria lead. Now, I wanted to mention that I mentioned the Dark Toad actually before, when, when I was making that video. Um, I was thinking, it, or not the Dark Toad, the Light Toad. I was thinking if I use the Light Toad as leader, Basically, I can get the attack lead, and then, you know, since they already have 100% crit, they don't need, like, a crit lead or anything, um, I use the attack lead in order to basically increase their damage even more, and they're able to one-shot everything, I think except for the Moonflowers on Wave 1. And then the good thing about the Toads is the Toads also have Sap, so I can also, you know, he can also provide more Sap against the boss, which uh, I think will be very, very effective against, against Golem's B10. So... Yeah, I just I want to. I guess I can do a really quick run of this just to show you guys how uh, how how it would work. And if you were to replace this light Nike with a Toad, you know how how good it would be because you need the attack lead to one shot the waves. Now the the only reason this team is stable is because the the Radices do so much damage because I'm building them like full attack. They they do so much damage that they one shot the waves except for the Moonflowers. So it's very very likely that they're um, they're gonna kill everything you know always with the attack lead. So I think the attack lead is very, very important. If you can get a variant Toad, and then you have some light Radices, you can probably make an even better team than this one. Just replace the light Victoria with the light Toad, and then just gem him like full attack Siphon as well. If possible, get him to 100% crit, and then he's going to be amazing, because um, if you have his morale boost plus his Siphon, he's going to get his bar full sooner, and it's more likely to, you know, that he will always have his bar full. And then his second skill is a Sap, so he can provide more Saps. See, I was short, like, I was short two Saps to kill this this uh this boss within two turns it would have been a really really fast run if i was able to kill him before he got this animation off um so i think if i if i get like you know a chance to do a little bit more sapping i might be able to kill him a little bit faster and get a uh, faster overall run time for golems b10 so I, I was thinking of getting the light tone and raising him if you don't have one i would definitely um definitely grab one if you can just like grab enough pieces to try to try to get him to evo 3 if you can so yeah, that's how much sap percent does he have? I think it's pretty low. It's only like 60%, but it's still pretty nice, I think. I mean, it's better than nothing. It's hard to get a light monster that has sap and also has attack lead. Where is he? I didn't even grab him last time he was out. He's only got a 60% chance to sap, but he does land three types of sap for one turn, so that's actually pretty nice. Um, Stat-wise, he's mostly he's he's balance type, so you see a lot of his stats going into HP and and defense. Well, mostly HP, but he still has um, almost 2.5k attack. It's uh you know 2,491, so it's almost 2.2.5k. Which means if you gem him with like triple attack or if you gem him with like crit rate double attack, 100% crit. He, now he might not be able to one shot the, the wave always, 
But if you do that, and you have a mom like Siphon, um, if he doesn't his AoE, he should probably be able to get his bar full again. And then with the help of his own morale boost, um, oh, he also needs crit. So yeah, you definitely do need, need to put him on a crit rate build. Crit rate double attack. Um, good thing is I have another Siphon set that can get him to close to 100% crit. So I, I guess I can use that set for him. And then... Uh, yeah, you just want his you just want his bar full as much as possible. So I think I would definitely put him on siphon. Like he's he's gonna work so much better on siphon. Um, but he's he's relatively hard to gem because you need like high crit rate siphon gems, which took me forever to farm. So um, this is like probably just very very late game stuff. But if you don't have one and you're playing early on um, and you see the guardian dungeon up, I would definitely go in and do some do some. Guardian Dungeons and try to grab some pieces for him, um, you know, at least enough to, to make an Evil 3 or close to Evil 3, so you can, like, you know, if you really, really need the monster, you can just summon it and, and raise him and use him. Um, so that's pretty much it for the monsters. Now, there's a few things that they also added into the game. They added skill books for the, the Kanas. Now, I don't have all the Kanas, but I can also take a look at their skill books. Now, the the one, uh, the two monsters I was I was actually a little bit more interested about is the water and dark Kanas. Um, the water one, I was thinking if you could, if she could get her skill book to like a hundred percent, she would be a really strong, you know, hundred percent armor breaker. But unfortunately, it only gave her ten percent more, so she'll be a ninety percent armor breaker, which is still pretty good actually, you know. And, th and this will be upgraded to seventy percent, but you need a lot of skill books, and they still haven't given us any ways to effectively, you know, obtain skill books. But if I do get skill books for Kana, I probably would feed into the Dark One. I think the Dark One only has damage increase, but it is a 20% damage increase. So um, if you have like three Dark Kanas, like fully max killed, just use it for like PVP, it could probably beat anything. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. I mean, I don't, I don't think I have the other ones. I think I, I fed them away. Yeah, I don't, I don't have the other Kanas. Um, it's not too important. The only other one is the wood one. No, I don't have the... I don't think I have the wood one. Um, but she's basically... I think she's like attack down and... Or was it blind? I can't remember. I think it was attack down or blind. And uh, courageous strike. And if if it's courageous strike, she basically just gets a damage increase. Um, she, yeah, attack down and courageous strike. I'm not sure this, this can be upgraded to two turns. If it can, then... She might be worth skilling up if you don't have any good uh, courageous strikers for wood. Mm, her color actually looks pretty nice. All right, so that's that's it for the kanas. Uh, the next thing is there is a um, there there's a there's a support support package. Now this thing is. Um, I didn't really buy it because I'm I'm broke. I'm I'm 100% broke. Like I, if you've been watching me for the past like two months, I'm broke. I'm just I'm broke. All right. I'm trying to, trying to, uh, yeah. I'm I'm trying. I'm working. Um, <laughs> I'm broke. I, I I don't have I don't have a lot to spend. But uh, this is one of my guildies bought one of these and you can keep buying them and they 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 basically just go into your inventory and you can. Um, click them to for them to uh, to pop up and basically they don't stack I think they don't stack with a double rate but I think it like extends the double rate so like if you summon it if you use it during this time it would not stack with this but it would like extend it by whatever time um, so like during the double whatever time it's not it doesn't um, it doesn't like it doesn't count or any or something like that. I, I I don't I don't really know. Oh wait, no 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 no. I heard it was like the one that the one that's uh, more powerful or the one that gives more of a bonus overlaps the other one. I think that's I think that's it. I'm not really sure. But what would happen if it was like a double XP event instead of the 1.5 times event? I don't know. I I think it should extend it. Like it's actually more fair if it does extend it. And not overlap because if it if it overlaps then it, that's kind of bad but anyways um my thoughts on this now what are, what are my thoughts on this uh 
I'll be objective. I promise. I'll be very, very objective. My thoughts on this? Um, for the normal player, I don't really think... I don't see that much value. I see this more for, like... I think this is, like, a... This is, like, a... I can't really say it's a whale thing, because it's, like, very, very low amount of money. But, like, if you were a whale... You could buy these and then just like pop all of them and then just like farm and stuff. Cause like the the thing with Monster Super League is you either you can whale for monsters. Like you can summon a lot of monsters, but you can't whale to farm, you know? You can't you can't like spend money to get gems. You can't spend money to level up your your uh, monsters. You also can't spend money to I guess you can like buy fruits, but like the time you spend buying fruits, you might as well go go do some do the level and, and farm and stuff. So um, I guess it it's basically to like it's like a VIP system the way I see it. Um, but it's not that like it's not that much of a difference. If it was like higher drop rate for better gems, then like that that would be pretty game breaking. But this is just you you uh you catch more monsters. I guess it's it's all right. It's not like it's not it's not super game breaking, and it's not gonna like you know separate the people without and with because catching these monsters are not the hardest thing in the world. Besides the Sarah event, uh, well I can't say it's it was super hard for me, but like for a lot of people it was pretty hard. Um, if you don't have like the absolute fastest team, but when you get to like super late game and you have like the fastest teams farming anything, um, you know, like capturing legendaries is, is, is just whatever these days. Like I, I feed so many legendaries into the rebirth fest, but I guess this could be somewhat good for, um, you know, if you're, if you're planning to spend a bit on the game, like maybe you, s would you be considered a whale if you spend like a hundred dollars every single month to play monster super league? I'm not too sure, but like, if you're like one of those players, then like, if you just spend like, you know, while, while you're farming, or while the time that you're like seriously farming, you just pop one of those packages and you just, you just like farm for 12 hours, and you, you catch a lot more, and then you get like more rebirth materials, you get, uh, or if you're like trying to do the Shiva fusion, you can complete the Shiva fusion faster. I think it's more of just like a premium thing. Um, I don't think it's super game breaking, like if you don't have money you don't need to buy it if you have money it could be worth it if you depending on how you play the game uh, and how much money you usually spend but if you're like someone that's like you can only buy like one package every single month um then that's not really worth it and if you're like completely free to play and you like only buy the monthly pack or actually wait if you're one of the players that only buy the monthly package with a heroes fest ticket um or the clan fest ticket uh, the tickets probably higher value so is the uh so is the monthly package but i think that's mostly for like players that spend a little bit more on the game like if they just want to because if you're like already spending close to a hundred like three dollars a few three dollars i guess like ten dollars maybe buy it like four or five times it's like fifteen dollars actually that's still a lot of money if you you, uh, if you don't have that much to spend maybe that's just that's just me t me talking because I'm poor all right um, but anyways that's not it's not it's not uh, it's not that horrible now the last thing I wanted to talk about is I think that's it that was pretty much it for this update um, but there's there's one more thing I wanted to talk talk to you guys about and that's that's a uh, it's a shout out all right it's a shout out it's a shout out to to my clan um, we're, we're, uh, we're separating. Now, what happened to my clan is we had some people that wanted to be really competitive. We also had people that wanted to be more casual. Um, and, you know, as our guild or as our clan is starting to get stronger, um, th there's kind of like a separation between the two. Cause you know, when you would like, we're, we're getting close to like level 90 Titans, uh, we were never competitive before. We had, like, no requirements. But now we're, like, getting close to level 90 Titans. I never thought I would see the day that, like, NVIDIA would be able to do this. Um, well, the problem is, you know, 
the, in order to, to keep that up, like people want to aim higher, like, you know, they, they see our ranks going up, they want to aim higher, and they wanted to um, basically separate the clans, and they also wanted to like, basically just make like a top tier clan, like a top, someone that's, a clan that's competitive, like an actual competitive clan. So basically we separated the clan into two. Um, originally I was going to name the other clan Superbia, but I found out that the clan name was taken. So we might name it something else. But if you, um, if you're interested in joining the clans, because since we're separating the two clans, after this week, we're going to have a lot of open slots. So if you're a casual player, you can, you can come, if you're, you can come and join the casual clan. If you're, uh, someone that wants to aim higher and become, um, competitive, then you can join the competitive clan. And for now, I don't have, I don't think I have that much time, but, you know, we can always, like, m move people between the two clans if you... If you feel like moving, like if you want to be a little bit more serious um, th through playing, I think that's one of the benefits to having two clans is that if you have players that like, you know, if you're a player that's, you know, during certain times, um, you might not have that much time to play and you don't, you want to be more casual, then you can stay in the casual clan. And then if you're like, you know, if they're, if you wanted to go into the competitive clan, then we can like, you know, ask people that if you want to trade trade spots and then you know someone can go into the casual clan and then like you can get a spot in the competitive clan you know and it'll i think it's a pretty pretty good idea because the I, i've been getting a lot of people asking me if they want to join the clan and the clan's like always full um so i think now it might be a good idea to to make a second clan because we have the resources and we have quite a few people on on discord as well um that want to want to join you know want to join join the clan that I made um, and so yeah we're, we're just basically separating into two clans so we're gonna have a lot of open slots um, doesn't we have two clans one is casual one is competitive so it doesn't matter if you're casual or competitive you can you can join you can come and join there's room um, there's there's room for you and if you want to join um, come and PM me on discord and we can we can add you. We can give you the role on my Discord server, and then we can just like we we'll, we'll have fun. We have we have we have cookies. We have cookies on my Discord server. Come to my Discord server. We have cookies. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess before I go, I, I can do I can do three clan battles. You know the, those. Those teams I made last time, they're actually pretty, you know, those su super troll teams, they're actually pretty good. They're not, they're not like the worst. They're actually, like this, this thing, this thing was actually not bad. I should have talked while doing Titans. I'll do like... I'll do this fight, I'll do the Indra fight. I'll, I'll use the Indra team, next team. And the third third suicide team, I guess you... I, I could show it. I could also not show it at the same time. Oh man, they literally got one shot. I don't have any good monsters. Like this is not how to do clan battles, but I don't have any monsters. I realize I have no nothing with attack down, and I have nothing with uh, defense down either. Like I I have no debuffs because I, I realize that um, there's only two types of monsters I build. I build aggressors for PvP, and I build attackers for farming, and that's it. <laughs> Everything else is like, yeah, it's either either just like. Aggressors or attackers. That's all I got. And I have like multiples of each. You see the three dark sea stars? I have like two light vigs. Like three dark mihos. Planning to build a fourth one. So I, I, I really have nothing else. Um, and the only thing, only monsters I really saved up for Titans are like Courageous Strikers. But Courageous Strikers still kind of suck without any support. So I probably need to build a few support monsters. There's a lot of really good filler monsters that I just never raised. Um, you know, for healers, there's like Kateen with a defense buff. It's very nice. There's, um, if you really need debuffs, like attack down and stuff, Light Killabat's really good. Light Killabat's the Guardian Dungeon Monster. It's got a 100% one turn 
um, attack down. And if you want like a defense down, um, Shelly, like water Shelly, farmable. It's got 100% de defense down. It's hard to second, uh, second skill is also single target. So it does do quite a lot of damage. But I guess my strategy still like, well, this isn't a, it's not a strategy. It's just, I guess my, uh, I don't even know what to call this. My, my shit, it works. My shit works. This, this shit works. It's just throw in attackers and, uh, and hope they do well. That's all I got. There, there is one thing, but it, the news is not out, so I guess there's... I mean, I could talk about it, but like, there's no information. There's a, there was a leaked screenshot of a monster that looked like a... He looked like a... It, it looked like a werewolf that had like a sword in one hand and a gun in the other. People are thinking that's the next capture monster. I think it's called Argon or something. Which I think means silver, so I guess like it's a werewolf, right? It's definitely a werewolf. It's all right. We ha we had too many waifus. It's time for uh, no, we had too many lollies. It's time for it's time for some monsters in Monster Super League. We we can uh, we have something for everybody's taste. You know, this team is actually pr really strong. If I if I ever got them all maxed out. Like, look at these monsters. If I got all these monsters maxed out, they're going to be so beast. So unlucky. My Indra didn't even get a full bar. You know, monsters that have um, first skill Courageous Strike are super OP. Like, they're, they're so much stronger than monsters with second skill Courageous Strike. Because the monsters with second skill Courageous Strike, they have to... Um, get their creator strike off like you have to get the blue soul and there's only a 50% chance that you get it and the monsters that have like a first skill creator strike on first turn you already hit them once with a creator strike so that's that's what makes like like that's what makes Pil Pinolo do so much damage because he's he got well first of all his second skill is also single target so that's that's pretty OP but he's he's got that first skill creator strike that's why um so monsters like Water Bell Rona, or uh, Fire Shinobi, or, uh, or 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 the uh, the Dark Indra, you know, you just look at this thing, this this, uh, this this sexy thing. That's why they're so strong for uh, for any Titans. I should build up. I should actually, if I wanted to improve my Titans team, I should forget about everybody else and just build up like the perfect support team for my Dark Indra. Just have like seven of the best support monsters, and on my first team. I will have like, like, uh, like all my second team of attackers. They will all be like defense down attackers. Just so when the when the Titan gets to the second round on the first round, he would always have defense down. That would that would actually be pretty amazing. Actually, I think the perfect Titan team is it, on your first team. You make them all die at the same time and have a lot of debuffers. So they always, like, you know, the boss always enters the second stage with a whole bunch of debuffs on him. That would actually be pretty amazing. Or make your debuffers, like, basically just as tanky as each other. That would probably work. Basically, make sure they're all the same elements and they're, like, they have the same amount of HP as all the other ones. The exact same amount of HP and defense. But then again, the boss crits sometimes on certain monsters, so... Yeah, there's, there's nothing you can do. Like, for this this one, um, he went one turn, so he's not going to have the attack down. But he does have, like, the defense down. So so the, the uh, left side team, or the right... Yeah, the left side team can do a little bit of damage. Oh, nice. My injury got a full bar. All right, this is gonna hurt, motherfucker. I 
I don't know if it's better to give my Indra the attack buff or just have like two defensive buffs. Because I have uh, the shield buff and the armor down, or the and the armor up buff. Come on, Verdi, land your blind. Oh wait, she got her, her bar full, so she's not gonna do her blind. Oh shit, I just I just hope I don't get one shot by this. Oof. Alright, good. At least my Indra's still alive. My Cupid's gonna put up his shield now. I need a better uh I need a better left side team. Just like pure debuffers. No no attackers. Just, they're, they're just there to debuff. And just stay alive. Until my uh my Indra can hit the uh I mean my Indra already hit the Titan like four or five times, so I think it's definitely worth. But yeah, the the blessing buff is uh it's a little bit too much. Only did a only did 1.7 million. Actually, that's a lot against the Titan. But then, then again, he has a evil three nat five, so his stats are a lot, a lot better. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, come, up, come to my Discord. We have, we have cookies and ice cream. Come, come and come and get cookies. And and join my jo join our clans because we have like a lot of open slots now. Um, not this week, but like after this week, the this the split's gonna happen. We're gonna split into two clans. We're gonna have a competitive and casual clan. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.